Hello and welcome. Right from the start, I want to leave a quick note. This video is split into two parts. The first part is aimed at those who still have questions or are less familiar with the emulation scene, where I'll answer some more basic questions. In the final part of the video, we'll talk about everything the forks have done so far and how they've evolved throughout this year. In today's video, we're going to answer one of the questions I get the most. I still use Yuzu or Ryujinx to this day. Should I migrate to Citroen, Eden, or Ryubing? We'll even show some practical results so that, by the end, you can decide for yourself whether it's time to migrate or if it still makes sense to stay where you are. On top of that, we'll go over in detail all the progress these emulators have made over the course of this year. First, let's clear up some very common doubts. If I migrate to another emulator, will I lose all my saves? Will I have to reconfigure my mods or reinstall game updates? Fortunately, the answer is no. Especially if you make a proper backup of your saves or your user folder. When migrating between Yuzu or Ryujinx forks, all your settings, saves, and other user data can be preserved. To do this, I recommend using portable mode. On user forks, you just need to create a folder called user in the emulator's root directory. On Ryujinx based forks, like Ryubing, you simply create a folder called portable, also in the root directory. If you do this and notice that your saves are gone, don't panic. Just cut all the files from your previous installation, which are usually located in the app data folder, and paste them into the user or portable folder you just created. You'll also notice that there are many forks available, but here I'll only talk about the ones I currently recommend, and I'll also explain why I don't recommend some others. Starting with the recommended ones, we have Citroen and Eden as Yuzu forks, and Ryubing as the only Ryujinx fork I recommend. There are other forks that I don't recommend at the moment, and that doesn't mean they can't be recommended in the future. Suyu, for example, is a project that has been abandoned and no longer receives updates. Torzu is another complicated case, because there's currently no clear way to know if the project is still being updated, since no one maintains it publicly and all development seems to happen in a very obscure way. Sadachi is also not recommended, because the developer abandoned the project to focus on monetizing other work, and even the latest available version is already quite outdated compared to other forks. Any other generic Yuzu fork is also not recommended, mainly due to the risk of improper data collection. On the Ryujink side, the recommendation is only Ryubing. The other existing forks have gone at least three months without updates, as their developers are busy with other projects or have simply put development on hold. Now, talking about performance and usability, is it worth migrating from Yuzu or Ryujinx to these newer forks? In most cases, the answer is yes, but it really depends on your PC. In tests I ran using Bayonetta 3, for example, the last official version of Yuzu actually delivered better performance compared to forks like Citroen and Eden. So, if your PC is already right on the edge of running games properly, sticking with Yuzu might still be the best option for now. At the same time, many of you might be wondering why I didn't test Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. And here's an important point. At the moment, I only have the latest updates for the game, which are not compatible with the old Yuzu. In other words, on Yuzu you might get better performance, but only on part of the library. You won't have access to the most recent game updates, since there's no support for newer firmwares. This ends up limiting Yuzu's compatibility list to older games. Newer forks, especially Eden, have seen significant improvements in overall compatibility. On top of that, you may notice more stutters when compiling shaders and other resources on Yuzu, while Citroen, for example, has almost flawless shader compilation. So in the end, it's a matter of choice. Do you want more raw performance but limited to older games? Go with Yuzu. Do you want more features, better compatibility with newer games, and hundreds of additional fixes? Eden or Citroen are the better options. As for Ryubing compared to Ryujinx, at the moment I wasn't able to run direct comparisons for the same reason, due to incompatibility with newer firmwares. Still, I can safely say that Ryubing delivers higher performance than the original Ryujinx. This is because it implements certain performance hacks that the original Ryujinx team refused to apply, since their focus has always been maximum accuracy. Even if that comes at a significant performance cost. So by now, you already know that switching emulators can bring compatibility gains and improvements in many games. Your saves will be preserved if you do everything correctly, but performance can vary, meaning you may gain or lose FPS depending on the game. As I said earlier, unless your hardware is already running games at its absolute limit, I strongly recommend making the switch. With that in mind, let's now talk in more detail about everything Eden and Citroen have done for the community since their launch. Of course, it's hard to catalog absolutely everything and something may end up being left out, 
but we'll try to make this analysis as complete as possible. Before that, don't forget to leave a like. Making this kind of video requires a lot of research and quite a bit of work. And if this is your first time here, consider subscribing to keep up with the weekly content. If you want to buy original games while saving a lot, check out Instant Gaming, the digital store that sells games for various platforms, such as PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch. Get games of all genres with discounts of up to 95%. You'll also find a variety of gift cards and credits for other services. You can pay for your order through your credit card on a website with a 4.7 rating on Trustpilot. You're buying games directly from Instant Gaming, not from other retailers. If you encounter any issues, Instant Gaming offers 24-7 support. And this month, Instant Gaming is offering a special discount on Wuchang, with a price at least $10 cheaper than on Steam, making it the lowest price ever for the game. What are you waiting for to save? Links in the description. Starting with Ryujinx or Ryubing, even before Ryujinx was taken down by Nintendo, the development team was already delivering important performance improvements. However, unlike the golden era of Nintendo Switch emulation on PC, change logs and detailed reports stopped being shared with the same frequency and depth. Because of that, information today is much more limited, and deeper research has become considerably harder. Going back a bit in time, around six months ago, as you can see in the screenshot on screen, Sadachi was the champion in raw performance at that point. Citroen was going through a hiatus, which we'll talk about later, and Eden was still a very recent project. Even so, Ryubing was already able to deliver higher raw performance in most tests, although it also required more powerful hardware to run satisfactorily, such as AM5 processors or Intel CPUs from the 12th generation onward. You might be wondering now, but you started talking about Ryujinx and ended up talking about Ryubing. Where did that come from? With the end of Ryujinx, Ryubing ended up becoming its direct successor. And yes, it basically does everything better than Ryujinx did, which makes using Ryujinx today completely pointless. There's no real reason to use it anymore. Getting back to the main topic, at some point the Yuzu forks ended up surpassing Ryubing's results in certain scenarios. We'll talk more about that later, but it's important to make it clear that this still depends heavily on the game being tested and the hardware being used. Among the main additions made by Ryujinx and Ryubing, as I mentioned earlier, many are not fully clear or well documented, but both have always had a reputation for running games right at launch, precisely because of their high emulation accuracy. We saw this happen again this year with Pokemon Legends ZA, and also in the past with Zelda, Echoes of Wisdom, which ran almost perfectly on Ryubing, while Yuzu Forks took longer to fix issues, especially those related to audio and rift effects. Another important addition, mentioned by Zephyron, the developer of Citroen, was the help of a Ryubing developer in fixing the audio issues in firmware 19 and also in implementing support for firmwares above 19. From what was explained, the final implementation was done by Zephyron, but with technical support from a Ryubing developer. If I'm wrong on any point and Zephyron shows up to correct this information, I'll pin the correction without any problem. Currently, Ryubing is still the most accurate emulator among all of them. However, as is often the case with emulation, accuracy almost always comes at the cost of performance. So if you're aiming for higher frame rates, you should be prepared to use high-end hardware. Now let's talk about Citroen, an emulator that emerged at the end of last year and didn't exactly come out of nowhere. Its main developer had previously worked on Yuzui, which at the time was considered one of the most promising emulators, especially because of its performance on Android. After some disagreements between Citroen and Sadachi, Yuzui was discontinued and returned as Citroen, now with a new identity and new developers. Initially, Sadachi accused Citroen of copying large portions of its code, practically replicating the project. In my view, this was never properly proven, especially since both are derived from Yuzu. The fact is that Citroen quickly began to outperform Sadachi in benchmarks and practical tests, even surpassing Ryubing in some scenarios, and rapidly became the favorite of a large part of the community. At that moment, Citroen seemed to be the definitive replacement for Yuzu, with many games being fixed and running better than on Sadachi. However, things soon started to go downhill. The project began to be frequently accused of being developed almost entirely by artificial intelligence. The situation worsened even further when around 95% of Discord users were banned, motivated by the implementation of DRM, along with a fallout between two developers, a story that to this day has never been fully clarified. As a result, the emulator ended up being put on ice for quite some time. Even so, the main developer continued working behind the scenes, fixing various issues. At a certain point, the wave of Discord bans was reversed, the DRM was abandoned, and the project was given a fresh start. The first versions after this return brought some new features, 
but they were still focused on lower impact improvements. Part of the community regained trust in Citroen, while another part chose to stay away. The real turning point came with the launch of the Switch 2. Because of this, several games from the original console received updates, including new languages like Portuguese, as well as small content additions. These updates couldn't be properly reproduced on emulators due to the lack of support for the new firmware. That's when Zephyron, together with a Ryubing developer, managed to fix this issue, opening the door for games released or updated in recent months to work correctly on the emulator. This update was, without a doubt, one of the best things the project has ever done. In addition, it finally helped fix a large portion of the audio issues related to firmware 19, although Citroen still doesn't have this fix fully implemented, remaining incompatible with some JRPGs, where audio may be completely missing or partially broken. In recent days, Citroen also delivered compatibility, on the Android version, with the new Snapdragon Elite, although it still shows slightly lower performance and accuracy compared to Eden. The current version of Citroen is an emulator that respects the work done by Eden and properly credits it when implementing solutions that originated there, something Eden also does in return. This December, Citroen finally arrived on iOS and also received a new implementation related to Metroid Prime 4. Since I haven't tested this game yet, I can't guarantee that it's already 100% playable. Today, Citroen is a mature emulator, with a solid development team, excellent performance on Windows, and performance that is good enough on Android, even though it still shows a few minor issues in its compatibility list. Finally, let's talk about Eden, which started development after the split between Citroen's developers. Eden took a very different approach compared to other forks, especially on Android. From the very beginning, the project looked for reinforcements from all sides, meaning that any developer interested in helping only needed to demonstrate their skills to be welcomed into the team. Eden ended up bringing together practically all developers who were working on smaller projects, mainly focused on Android, and integrated them into a single main project. It was also one of the first projects to deliver functional online multiplayer on Android. However, its early development was slow and quite turbulent. The first test builds ended up leaking publicly, but the developers managed to handle the situation quickly. It took a little over two months for the first official version to appear, which still wasn't fully ready, but overall it was very well received by the community, especially because at that time Citroen had stopped receiving updates, and nobody knew if new versions would come in the future. With some performance improvements and the implementation of hacks mainly focused on Android, Eden quickly reached an audience that was basically left without any active project, since the few existing options were extremely incomplete. Eden also went through internal issues, such as former developers handing over Discord credentials to third parties, which practically destroyed the project's server. Fortunately, the community itself helped recover the server, and since then the team has been working in a much more organized and careful way. The early versions of Eden didn't bring many interesting changes for Windows, but on Android development was moving at full speed. Over time, as the project evolved, Eden's biggest strength emerged, fixing more than 50 games that were previously incompatible or had various issues. After that, the emulator also received the implementation of the new audio system and the new firmware originally developed in Citroen. But Eden went even further, expanding its compatibility list even more. One of the biggest highlights was fixing around 10 to 20 JRPGs that still suffer from audio issues or complete audio absence in Citroen. Eden was also one of the first emulators to fix Pokemon Legends ZA almost at launch. The initial fix wasn't 100%. But today the game runs very well and is actually the best way to play it on Android so far. Focusing specifically on Android, Eden received several improvements aimed at this system, mainly thanks to Mr. Purple's custom drivers, which generally deliver surprisingly good performance on Google's mobile platform. Still on Android, Eden was also one of the first emulators to offer compatibility with Snapdragon Elite. Performance on these devices is not as good as on previous generations yet, but this isn't really an emulator issue and rather a limitation of the current drivers. Nowadays, Eden still releases builds at slightly longer intervals compared to Citroen, for example, but it's always possible to use the nightly versions, keeping in mind that these builds are not officially developed or supported by Eden's main team. Recently, they also introduced a more complete implementation of the Switch's home menu, something that had already been attempted by other projects in the past, further reinforcing Eden's commitment to console preservation. At this point, Eden is an extremely solid emulator in everything it sets out to do. Today, I can confidently say that it is the most complete emulator available on Android, both in terms of performance and compatibility list, as well as features. And if you're a PC user, 
it's very unlikely that you'll be disappointed with it either. And that was today's video. Thanks to everyone who watched until the end. Don't forget to leave a like to support the channel. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.